hello hello good morning students today we will see another type of uh, conjunctivities already we have seen uh, bacterial conjunctivities allergic conjunctivities so today another variety that is called as a chlamydial conjunctivities so conjunctivities because of the chlamydia so chlamydia are the agents that are in between viruses and bacteria they exist intracellularly they have both dna and rna they are obligate intracellular and filtrable whereas like bacteria they contain both dna and rna divide by binary fission the chlamydia combinedly form the plt that is chlamydia cytokosis trachomatis and lymphogranulomatis that is called as a treat agent the life cycle of chlamydia the infective particle invades the cytoplasm of epithelial cells swells up and forms an initial body the initial body is repeatedly divides to form elementary bodies embedded in glycogen matrix which are liberated when the cell burst and the burst cell from the burst cell the elementary bodies again infect the other cell and the cycle continues so according to the jones the classification the class 1 is blinding trachoma class 2 is non blinding trachoma and class 3 is the para trachoma so we are about blinding trachoma hyper endemic trachoma caused by serotypes a b b a and c of chlamydia associated with secondary bacterial infection they transmitted from i to i by transfer of ocular discharge through various modes non blinding trachoma is caused by chlamydia trachomatis serotypes a b b a and c not associated with secondary bacterial infection this is an important line it is a mild form of the disease the para trachoma it refers to oculogenital chlamydial disease it is caused by serotypes d to k of chlamydia trachomatis so today we are dealing with a trachoma that can be asked as a short note for your theory examination and it is important from the point of viva as it is safe strategy the examiner can ask you about safe strategy and just to know this for the developing world the drugs they are given free so you should know something about this preventing aspect for trachoma trachoma at one time known as a egyptian ophthalmia it is or it was endemic in middle east during prehistoric period it spread far and wide in europe by french army during napoleon wars trachoma is still a leading cause of preventable blindness worldwide it is a third after cataract and glaucoma so it is one of the preventable cause for blindness preventable Approximately one fifth of the population of world is affected by trachoma, accounting to 150 million people across the 48 countries. It is estimated that 6 million people are blind in both eyes. It still remains a significant problem in areas of Africa, South East Asia, Asia, the Middle East, and Australia. it is a chronic keratoconjunctivitis affecting superficial epithelium of conjunctiva and cornea simultaneously simultaneously word is important so it affects the superficial epithelium of conjunctiva as well as cornea what is the meaning of trachoma it means rough and swelling so you can see in a trachoma cases chronic inflammation of conjunctiva and cornea follicular and papillary hypertrophy and growth of blood vessels over the cornea that is called as pannus there can be a short note on pannus so you have to prepare a short note on pannus also trachoma is caused by chlamydia trachomatis immunotypes serotypes a b and c chlamydia organism shares properties of both bacteria and viruses just we have seen and it is an obligatory intracellular bacteria 
the predisposing factors for trachoma are if you are going according to the age the infection usually contracted during infancy and early childhood otherwise there is no age bar it is preponderantly seen in females no race is exempted so you can see in this picture it is a totally dirty area so you can remember all these d that is the dusty environment dirty dry having dung there is a discharge and density of population also sandy environment all these are predisposing factors buff of the environment for the trachoma so poor personal hygiene abundant fly population unhygienic and crowded surroundings and lack of water so scarcity of water is an important factor predisposing factor then socio economic status the disease is more common in poor classes owing to unhygienic and crowded surroundings unsanitary conditions paucity of water lack of materials like separate towels handkerchiefs so this is a luxury for some it is a necessity but it is luxury for some lack of education and understanding about spread of contagious diseases how it is spread so it is spread by the eye seeking fly you should remember the name it is called as a musca sorbens Aggressively feeds on ocular and nasal discharges, and these discharges may contain chlamydia trachomatis. So the transmission occurs that is a direct transmission from eye to eye through discharge, vector transmission common through flies, and material transfer from contaminated fingers of doctors, nurses, stonometers, or fomites and eye cosmetics. So fomites. that can be seen in children you can have a eraser pencil all these exchange items they are called as a fomites during play the child can exchange the item that is called as a fomite so you can remember this as a flies feces faces fingers and fomites these are the predisposing factors so it is a contagious spread by finger flies towels handkerchiefs bedding and fomites use of kajal or surma by the same family member from the same container and surma rods so it is a contagious and it can spread in the families the secondary bacterial infection helps for the transmission of trichoma the disease is contagious in acute phase the incubation period is 5 to 12 days this is a picture in which you can see a fly at this uh, canthus side of the eye and there is a discharge in the eye then you can see a dusty dirty environment and also a crowded condition and the people living in a poor sanitation conditions how it occurs the trachoma usually occurs in childhood in 70% before 11 years of age so in this picture you can see cycle of infection and multiple cycles of chlamydia infections within the family through the ages so you can see the mother is wiping the eye of the child with her cloths the child also is having while the feeding contact with the infected mother and then mother also can get infected because of a child when the child is in a play or child can infect other so it is a vicious cycle the females are more affected because of the habit of use of ghungat burqa or veil tala burqa kiwa apan parda mhanu shakto tar that is common in uh, arab countries use of burqa in india also we have in uh, rajasthan or in some communities they use this burqa or gungat so this is the life cycle of trachoma so this slide can be explained later so as just i told it is a vicious cycle means crowding scarcity of water 
scarcity of latrines all these will cause there is an increase in the number of flies knowledge and attitude and practices are less the people sleep together there is a lack of facial cleanliness there is infection and reinfection then there is a trachomatis inflammation at follicular then trachomatis conjunctival scarring trichiasis corneal opacity and blindness blindness leads to poverty and poverty again leads to poverty because there is loss of pay so again they will not have that much amount of money to have a separate room separate towels then then abundant amount of water and all these again will cause infections blindness and the community or the family can go into the blindness and poverty so the infection remains in the community it can be in a endemic the climate atrocities is seen in conjunctival scrappings in the form of colonies in the epithelial cells you should remember this what are the hp bodies so the pronunciation is difficult halber stadter provasic inclusion bodies so you can see these inclusion bodies in conjunctival scrappings these inclusion bodies are composed of innumerable elementary bodies embedded in carbohydrate matrix the elementary bodies attacking epithelial cells and last to become initial bodies in the cytoplasm of the cells then the initial bodies divide to form innumerable elementary bodies the nucleus of cell is displaced it degenerates and cell burst so when the cell burst the elementary body are released they attack new cells so when the cell is burst there is a formation of a scar so when there is a trachoma you get a scar formation this is a picture that will tell you there is a infection of a cell with trachoma climate uh, then there is a elementary body that penetrates the host cell of then there is a initial body formation there is a binary fusion there is again bursting of a cell and there is a reinfection of another cell so climate atrocomitis this is trachoma causing bacterial life cycle so what are the symptoms the pure trachoma is usually a symptomatic condition or there may be minimum symptoms there may be redness irritation discharge foreign body sensations what all these are causes because of there is a ocular irritation it is a epitheliotropic organisms causing problem with the conjunctiva and cornea there is epithelial infection or inflammation the systemic symptoms like rhinitis preauricular lymphadenopathy and upper respiratory tract infection may be present onset is usually subacute but may occur as acute when infection is massive or severe the primary infection is epithelial involving conjunctival cornea it is characterized by conjunctival congestion the upper tarsal conjunctiva appears red and velvety later may become uniformly thick like jelly so these words are important thick like you can see papillary and follicles in upper palpebral conjunctiva typical star shaped scarring that is called as a earl's line the palpable conjunctival scarring is seen in 2 mm from the upper lid margin in the sulcus subtarsalis where there are so many follicles are formed so you can be asked a question what is the line seen in trachoma in your viva so the answer is earl's line the follicles are found in lower fornix already you have been explained what are the follicles so in this uh, picture you can see sago grain like structure they are look, looking white in color and this uh, the size is 0.5 mm or 1 mm the follicles are found in lower fornix upper fornix upper margin of tarsus sometimes they can be seen in caruncle or plica seminolaris generally or maximally they are seen in bulbar conjunctiva palpable conjunctiva 
at the bulbar conjunctiva they are seen at the near limbus so in corneal affection you can have a superficial keratitis so herbert spitz are these are follicle like infiltration near the limbus in the upper part this results in depressions caused by cicatrization of limbal follicles so there should not be confusion between herbert spitz and there are horner trantas dots horner trantas dots are seen in allergic conjunctivitis vernal limbal variety and herbert spitz they are seen in trachoma and they are because of the follicles there are depressions caused by cicatrization of limbal follicles horner trantas and herbert spitz you should not confuse between two then corneal signs you can have a stage of pannus just i have told you there is a vascularization at the cornea this is called as a pannus so there are progressive pannus and regressive pannus so infiltration is beyond vascularization and regressive means infiltration has receded and vessels are ahead of infiltration so when you can remember like progressive pannus means the opacity is pushed by the vessel so opacity or infiltration is in front of the vessel it means that the disease is worsening it is a progressive and in regressive variety the infiltration or the opacity at the cornea has receded and the vessels are in front of the infiltration or opacity corneal ulcer they are chronic occurs anywhere but commonest of the at the advancing age of pannus shallow ulcers with little infiltration so in this picture you can see the first picture a that is showing the vessels are pushing the opacity or infiltration so this can be a progressive pannus and in the second the infiltration is behind the vessel vessels are ahead of the infiltration so progressive pannus superficial blood vessels are parallel and directed downwards extend to a horizontal level beyond which zone of infiltration and haze is present and in regressive variety blood vessels extend beyond the haze this is an important in evaluation in the result of treatment and progress of disease whether your treatment is effective so it can have a prognostic value infiltration of cornea associated with corneal vascularization in the upper limbal area you can see the vessels lie between epithelium and bowman's membrane these are the pictures in the first picture you can see the sago grain of follicles in the second picture mild conjunctival scarring in chronic trachoma in the third picture conjunctival scarring that is a ulcer line it is 2 mm behind the marginal or at the sulcus subtarsalis and in the fourth picture you can see the Her herbert spitz in trachoma these are the depressed pits at the superior limbal conjunctiva conjunctiva so you should know something about maclan's classification maclan in 1908 divided the clinical course of trachoma in four stages stage 1 is incipient trachoma or stage of infiltration that is hyperemia of bulb pellucid conjunctiva and immature follicles stage 2 established trachoma or stage of fluorid infiltration that is fluorid mature follicles or papillary hyperplasia progressive pannus limbal follicles superior corneal infiltrates then stage 3 signs of stage second with cicatrization and stage 4 cicatrization and disease that is maclan's classification but you should know about the who classification this can be an additional advantage if some examiners ask about a maclan's classification this is a tablet form stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 and stage 4 in stage 1 incipient trachoma in stage of infiltration stage 2 established trachoma 
mature follicles stage 3 cicatrizing and stage 4 is heal trachoma or stage of sequelae the disease is cured sequelae results in symptoms so this is maclans so in examination you can be asked for your viva who classification that is in 1987 this classification is done by the world health organization about this grading of trachoma this is called as a fisto f i s t o fisto means it is a trachomatous inflammation follicular then i means trachomatous inflammation intense s means trachomatous scarring then t means trachomatous trichiasis <laughs> so trachomatous inflammation follic follicular means it is an active disease predominantly follicles at least five or more follicles in upper palpebral conjunctiva are seen trachomatous inflammation intense is pronounced inflammatory thickening of upper palpebral conjunctiva it obscures more than half of the normal deep tarsal vessels then trachomatous scarring it is a presence of scarring in tarsal conjunctiva seen as white bands or sheets of fibrosis trachomatous trichiasis when at least one eyelash rubs the ocular surface evidence of recently removed trichiatic eyelash corneal opacity easily visible corneal opacity present in pupillary area the causes significant visual impairment diagnosis of trachoma can be done as a clinical or laboratory diagnosis so clinical the presence of any two signs follicles or papillae epithelial keratitis pannus red vasculation of the cornea and star shaped scarring so out of these four if there are presence of any of the two signs you can clinically diagnose the case of trachoma the laboratory test they are done that is in histopathology you can see inclusion bodies culturing irradiated macoy cells then immunoglobulin a ipl light microscopy test micro immunofluorescence test and monochromal antibody direct congenital cytology that is jimsa standard smear showing a predominantly polymorph nuclear reaction with presence of plasma cells and liver cells is suggestive of trachoma detection of inclusion bodies in congenital smear may be possible by jimsa stain then enzyme linked immunosorbent assay that is elisa for chlamydial antigens then pcr is also useful isolation of chlamydia is possible by yolk sac inoculation method and tissue culture technique standard single passage macoy cell culture requires at least 3 days serotyping of trick agents is done by detecting specific antibodies using microimmunofluorescence method direct monoclonal fluorescent antibody microscopy of congenital smear is rapid and exp- inexpensive the sequelae of trachoma the sequelae in the leads then there are congenital sequelae corneal sequelae and other sequelae in eyelids you can see ptosis scaphoid lead entropion tylosis madaurosis and chelagion in conjunctiva you can see loss of pornisis parenchymatous jerosis symblepharon pigmentation of the conjunctiva and pseudoterygium in cornea you can see herbert spit healed pannus leading to hazy cornea different grades of corneal opacity trachomatous nodular keratopathy and loss of sensation the treatment the treatment management of trachoma should involve curative as well as a control measures so treatment of active trachoma treatment of trachoma sequelae prophylaxis and prevention of trachoma blindness so therapeutic treatment is systemic therapy oral sulfonamide for 3 weeks tetracycline or erythromycin so generally we are preferring tetracycline or doxycycline erythromycin 
that is 250 mg orally four times doxycycline is given 100 mg orally twice per day for four weeks or single dose of azithromycin 20 mg per kg so azithromycin is given free of cost by cipla to the developing world just um, at the start of my lecture i uh, talked about this so local or topical treatment it is best for individual cases tetracycline ointment 1% two times for 6 weeks followed by intermittent treatment that is twice daily for five consecutive days or once daily for 10 days treatment of sequelae and there is a health education that is a prophylactic you have to give the health ed education that is all depends on the plenty of water scarcity of water is the predisposing factor so facial cleanliness so health education about the safest strategy that is called as a surgery for trichiasis or enterobion use of antibiotics that is oral as well as local then facial cleanliness and environmental sanitation so the last in my lecture i have shown you the slides so you can remember all these d that is dusty dry dirty environment and then flies feces feces and fomites that is are the predisposing factor so you can remember these mnemonics public awareness and community participation is an important for this safe strategy this is a picture taken from google so in this picture you can see the child is washing his eyes and there is a, also you can have a surgery cap they are doing that can be a intraoperative or lead surgery you can see so this is a safe safe this is a question can be asked in our examination already i told for the viva questions so what is the herbert speeds what is oils line so what is a safe strategy and what is a panas so these are the four questions these are important from your viva point of view thank you so in summary you can have trachoma is a leading cause of preventable blindness worldwide spread can be prevented or restricted can be treated by systemic or local treatment and health education plays a major role that is safe strategy is applied for prevention of blinding conditions thank you